molecules of oxygen gas in this room there. We would say the volume of the, those two molecules of oxygen gas is the volume of this room. So the distance between the two molecules there is much, much bigger than the size of the molecule itself. Okay. So even with billions of molecules in this room here, um, uh, uh, oxygen gas and nitrogen gas and whatever uh, gas components in this room here, the distance between the two molecules are still much, much smaller, uh, but much, much bigger than the size of the, uh, than the, than the, size of the, uh, uh, the atoms or the molecules themselves. Okay, so that's another, and we can actually therefore ignore the interaction between the molecules there since they are so much, uh, so, uh, so far apart from one another. Okay, and the oscillation goes on. The next one says the particles move in straight lines. So there's no curveballs. Okay, so they collide in straight lines. Their particles are moving in straight lines there, so they collide with one another. And uh, between uh, the, the collision, with the, uh, they always move in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in straight lines there. So when they collide with one another, when they collide with the wall there, they do not change the direction. Well, they only go back to the opposite direction when they offer the collision there. So they don't change the direction uh, like the, like when you throw a curveball. So that basically says the particles collide with one another. They do not exert extra force on one another. They don't accelerate after the collision. They only bounce into one another. And they only bounce back to the opposite direction with the same uh, with the same uh, uh, with the same uh, uh, speed. Okay. So that's another important uh, assumption there. And then this one, the average kinetic energy. We mentioned this at the beginning yesterday. Uh, there, EK, average kinetic energy, equals to one half of mv squared. And we assume that all gases, regardless of their molar mass, how heavy they are, how light they are, regardless of the, their own mass, molar mass, under the same temperature, all gases have the same average kinetic, kinetic energy. So in a word, if you have the temperature fixed, EK is the constant. <coughs> Well, EK is the product of one half m of v squared. Kinetic energy has something to do with the mass. Kinetic energy has something to do with the, bulk of, with the uh, velocity. So if any gas or all gases, regardless of their weight, molar mass, they have the same kinetic energy, then that must imply heavier molecules will move slower. Because heavier molecule, this number is greater. This number has to be smaller in order to keep this number constant. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, uh, very important uh, um, uh, assumption that we make there. And regardless of the molar mass of the uh, gases, there they all at the same temperature, all gases have the same kinetic energy. So this is something that we need you to remember. And gas gas particles collide with one one another, collide with the inner walls uh, without losing energy. So it's Collision is total elastic. They only bounce into one another. They only bounce back to the opposite direction. And uh, there is no energy loss there. So these are the six postulations that we have for kinetic molecular theory. And these are the things that I need you to uh, memorize. Okay, very important. Now using this, this is the picture representing the motion of a collection of gas. Different types of gases there. And we can say this is the air molecule, how the molecules of different uh, um, gases move in the mixture of air. And blue for nitrogen, uh, red for oxygen. And they're always in random motion. And they're colliding with one another. They're colliding with, with walls there. And during the collision there, there is no energy loss. Okay? And kinetic, average kinetic energy is a constant when the temperature is the same. So that's what we're looking what we're talking about. Now looking at that, we can actually verify all these postulations. The importance of quantitative science really in chemistry really is that when you propose something, there has to be an evidence, even though you cannot see molecules, the molecules are so small, even though you cannot see atoms, when you propose something in theory, you have to have experimental evidence to prove that theory. So in this case, in the distribution of molecular speed, we can measure how fast a particular molecule travels there. And the relationship between the velocity and the temperature is that 
when you have when you increase the temperature there, then the velocity is also increasing. Uh, when you increase the temperature, you increase the velocity, can I have energy? So the distribution of molecular speed at 25 degrees Celsius, and uh, the velocity, the average velocity, uh, we're talking about some of the molecules are going to be, be moving faster than others, but the majority of the mo molecules will be moving at, say, 400 meters per second. If you raise the temperature to 1,000 degrees Celsius, then most of the molecules, the majority of the molecules, will be moving at a much higher temp uh, speed, somewhere around, say, 900, 800, 900 meters per second. So we can actually document this in the laboratory by manipulating the temperature uh, with a certain amount of uh, oxygen gas and trapped inside a container there. We can measure their speed, and we can determine. And, and, and then the speed at a higher temperature some of the molecules are capable of moving at a much, much higher speed. Yeah. So in this case, the molar mass, and since we have that assumption there, all gases, regardless of their molar mass, at the same temperature, they have the same kinetic energy. So that implies a heavier molecule will move slower. We can also, this is actually uh, data that came from the uh, from an experiment there. We can mix hydrogen, we can mi mix the uh, helium and water vapor nitrogen gas and oxygen gas together. Helium, the atomic mass is 4.0026 gram per mole. Water, 18. Nitrogen, 28. Oxygen, 32. Okay. So if you look at the data here, the average velocity decreases as the mass increases. Here. Helium being the lightest molecule, an atom, is moving at a much faster speed. Oxygen being the heaviest molecule, it's moving much slower. So and this is something that we can actually verify. The molar mass versus the distribution of speed. And we can clearly see heavier molecules are moving slower. Okay. And that explains that, well, that proves the postulation that at the same temperature, kinetic energy of all gases is a constant. So a lighter molecule will have to move faster in order to keep that EK constant. A heavier molecule doesn't have to move as fast and to have the same, in order to have the same kinetic energy there. So here's a question we can ask you there. If we mix equal mass, everything that we have a different color on the PowerPoint uh, slide is something that you need to pay attention to. So equal masses of nitrogen gas and argon gas are placed in separate containers of equal volume at the same temperature. Okay. Now we can make some statement about the state of the gases here. The first one is, we have more molecules of nitrogen present than atoms of argon. Is that a true or false statement? We will look into that. Well, that's not even related to uh, the uh, kinetic molecular theory there. And basically, equal masses, equal volume, PV equals nRT. We can figure out which one has more number of more number moles. A higher number of moles means uh, more particles in there, more molecules or atoms in there. Okay. The second statement there is that the pressure is greater in the argon class, the atoms have average, uh, greater average uh, speed uh, in argon uh, compared to nitrogen molecule there. And the molecules of nitrogen gas collide more frequently with the wall of the uh, class and then do the atoms more. We will look into, based on the six postulations that we uh, presented at the beginning of this learning objective, we will look at each of these uh, statements. Here. Now the first one says there are more molecules of nitrogen than the atoms of argon. That really has 